Hello, 7th graders. Hopefully everyone is doing well. Um, it is uh, coming up here on our second week of distance learning. Hopefully you are getting that routine down and getting everything um, uh, done. Uh, one thing you can kind of figure out right now is in class we're going to use Edpuzzle a lot. Um, some of you just hit play and you're like, oh, I think I'm good. No, you need to go through and then when you click on Edpuzzle, it'll take you in there and you got to do the video and answer the questions. So it'll take you, if the video is five minutes, it's going to at least take you five minutes because you got to watch the whole thing and answer the questions. You can't skip ahead. So um, I'm going to use those quite a bit. Now, of course, the other way I'm using stuff is if you watch YouTube. I had someone email me the other day that said, hey, I don't understand the assignment. I said, did you watch my YouTube video and do the Edpuzzle? And they go, no. Well, you kind of need to know, do those things first to kind of understand this. So um, I'll kind of give you an idea what today will bring. Today's going to bring is um, we're going to be doing this, of course, and this is um, I'm going to upload this on YouTube and then we hopefully get an Edpuzzle. So hopefully this worked. Um, and then uh, you're going to take a short quiz over everything we learned this week. Uh, we're going to keep building on the stuff that we're talking about right now. Um, so. And we're going to kind of recap and go through the different things that, that we've done. So, um, you know, and if you haven't done any assignments, I email you. I'm not trying to be mean or anything. I'm just trying to give you reminders that you don't forget. Um, I'm going to talk to Mr. Bowman right now. I think he's releasing stuff on Sunday night. And then people are weirdly going and doing all his stuff. He's supposed to be Tuesday, Thursday, on Monday, Wednesday. I won't release anything Tuesday. I won't release anything Thursday. On Fridays, I might start doing like a little science demonstration, but it doesn't, it's no homework. Okay. So there, there's that. All right. So earlier this week, we, we got into, um, talking about our producers, consumers, and decomposers. Now, of course, you can break those down into more, uh, specific when you talk about consumer, what kind of consumer are you? Um, and, um, of course, decomposers break down dead organisms, consume, consume organisms and producers produce uh, energy from the sun. So the first thing we talked about the other day was um, food chains. So let me grab a, I think it's this one. Cross my fingers. It is. Look how, wow, that was a nice clean image. So I'm just going to stretch this out so we can kind of talk a little bit about food chains. Now, your assignment was to write three different food chains. You know, I'll just go out in nature, find some different organisms, producers, consumers, decomposers. Now, decomposers are hard because basically what you're limit to, limited to is going to be what? Bacteria, fungi, you know, mushrooms. And that's kind of what we're going to find in this area. Now, when you start a food chain, now not all of you did this, but there's something I want to talk about. You always want to start with some type of producer. Okay. And you can see here, you have a tree and a flower and um, uh, another flower. Now, each food chain is different. Now, one thing I never really got to talk about is what do the arrows represent in here? What do the arrows show us? Anyone know? Well, what they show us is the energy transfer. Where is the energy going? The energy right here is going from the apple tree to the deer, from the deer to the lion. Eventually, if you're a top predator, who gets, who gets top predator? decomposers. And what do decomposers do? They actually put the energy and those nutrients, sorry, back in the ground for who? You're right, the producers. So a food chain is only, is exactly that. And if you remove one of the things, things in a food chain, the chain doesn't work anymore. Um, so people are like, oh, why do we got to save this animal? Why do we got to do this? And who cares about this minute organism? Because if you eliminate that, from a food chain, it messes with everything. And then that ecosystem won't be in balance. And we're going to talk more about that next week when we get into carrying capacity and, and um, even like top predators. You need top predators. If you don't have top predators, it doesn't work. If you don't have good um, producers, it doesn't work. You need all of these different parts. So as we look through this, and we can see flower to flies, butterflies, frog, the energy is transferred from the frog to the snake. Now, at every level, you have to think here, what's happening? Does 100% of this energy from the flower go to the butterfly? No, it doesn't. It's okay. Or like a deer, for example. Um, this deer up here, does do they get all the energy from the, 
the apples or the trees or whatever they're eating. No, they lose energy. They have to expel energy through heat. Going to the bathroom is getting rid of energy. When a deer poops, for example, um, they've converted what food they have to energy. The rest of it is waste. So they get rid of that. All of that energy is lost. Okay. And it changes forms. It's just like if you go outside and you go out running and you start sweating. Well, whatever you ate that day, you're not con converting 100% of it in to energy. Some of it's lost. You're sweating. You're losing heat. You know, you got to go to the bathroom, things like that. So when we go through here, at every level, energy is lost. So when I start here, I have a lot of energy. The closer you are to the sun, the more energy because that's where you're getting your, your food source. Because you got to think of plants getting hit with the sun. They're taking in not all of it. They're losing energy too because they got to grow and all those other things. It takes energy to make fruit. Okay. So at every level, energy is lost. So what happens to the amount of energy when we get down to the eagle? Well, there's not a lot left. Okay. You look at your top predators, think like owls, wolves. You don't see tons of them. Why? Because they're eating so far down on the food chain that the energy is gone. There's not enough there. An owl, for example, is eating mice. Huh. Mice, just a little bit of, little bit of energy. And if you can't get enough energy, you can't have um, the numbers. Meaning, if I look at population here, as I have a high population here, what happens to population as you go through a food chain? It goes down. What happens to the amount of energy as you go through a food chain? It goes down. So you are, two things are happening here is when you're going through here, um, you start here and you go down and the, the population is getting smaller because there's only so much energy left for that population to eat. Okay. And these are your food chains. And you guys did a pretty good job of the uh, ones I got to look through. The second part that we're going to talk about is, whoops, that is not the one I wanted. I think it's this one. There it is, the food web. So I talked briefly about this the other day. So what's the difference between a food chain and a food web? Well, a food chain is one single chain. A food web is a whole bunch of chains webbed together. Now, I always tell people to think of a food web like a spider web. What happens if you remove one of these organisms in a food web? Same thing happens to a spider web. You take one of the strings and take it off. What happens? It sags. Suddenly, it's not right. It's lacking. Okay, so um, food, food webs are important. And if you look at food webs, this is the biggest thing people have to remember. You point to where the energy is going. So for example here, the plant's energy is going to the duck. Therefore, it's pointing there. Now that's saying the duck is eating this. Um, and people always mess it up. They'll point the other way. And it's like the duck is getting eating, eaten by the algae. You know, it doesn't make sense. Or they'll have these messed up and they'll be like, oh, the fish eats the eagle. No, it always points to where the energy is flowing. The arrows represent energy. And of course, food webs are going to be more complicated than food chains because you're dealing with a whole bunch of organisms that interact on a daily basis. So therefore, in that ecosystem, you have all these organisms and how they interact. Okay. Um, when, when looking at these, you can always see your, don't worry about this. We haven't talked about primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers. Um, we're, we're just not going to get a chance to talk about that this year. But you should know the difference between a producer, which are going to be your plants because they get their energy from photosynthesis, so they produce their own energy. And your consumers, you can be, uh, what kind of consumer are you? Are you an herbivore that eats only plants? Are you a, um, a carnivore that eats other organisms? Um, are you a decomposer that breaks down um or sorry, are you a scavenger that uh, kills or sorry, eats uh, dead things or are you a decomposer? You break down um, dead organisms, put the nutrients back in the ground. So know the difference between those. Now you look at your top predators. Your top predators aren't going to be herbivores ever because they're eating the, the organisms that don't have enough energy. So your top predators, that's why, that's why you don't see a ton of bald eagles. 
the ground here we definitely see more than most places, but um, that's why you don't see a ton of them. Now, the last thing I would like to talk about is going to be the food uh, pyramid. There it is. So hopefully this gives you a better representation of the food chain that I was talking about before. A food pyramid or energy pyramid is exactly that. What happens as a pyramid gets taller? It gets, it goes down and it gets narrow, narrow, narrow. Same things happen here. You start off with a ton of energy. Energy's lost at every single trophic level, they're called. And as that energy is lost, what happens to the population? There's less and less. And that's the one thing I really want you um, to understand there is what's happening to the energy as you're traveling through. As you're traveling through, it's going to be less and less and less and less um, to your tertiary consumers or your top top predators. Okay. So um, to kind of recap what I talked about there is um, just remember from Monday. And when you guys do take the quiz, you can use... Um, Use, excuse me, use whatever resource you want. It's fine with me because uh, we're, we're still learning it. So um, we have food chains, food webs, energy pyramid. And if you need to, you can always watch the video from Monday, which is on YouTube, which is my YouTube channel. Hey, I'm up to like 86 subscribers, so, you know, look out. Um but you can always go on my YouTube channel. If you do subscribe, I'm not saying you have to, but if you do subscribe, when I post a new video, you get an email right away. Because I notice when I post a new video, a couple people watch it right away before I even put it in Google Classroom, which is fine. But um, if you do need to watch that again, you can. Uh, just remember when we do an Ed Puzzle, you have to answer the questions. You just can't let it sit there and hit play and go, well, I'm going to go take a shower. It doesn't work. You have to work your way through it. And it's easy, you just gotta do it, okay? So, um, and then, I might move that. Uh, so we have food chains, food webs, and food pyramids. Um, remember the difference between all those primary, or consumers and, and, and uh, producers and decomposers. Uh, knowing what a food chain looks like. I gave you an example in this one um, of what one looks like. Uh, knowing and understanding that the energy is lost through every level, so the population, energy goes down, the population goes down. Okay. All right. So um, I think that's everything. Um, hopefully everyone has a great Easter. Uh, just a reminder, Friday, I will not post anything. Nothing is due Friday. Um, you have no classes on Friday or I will not post on Monday either because there's no class. Uh, this will be the last time we see each other till next Wednesday. So everyone have a um, happy Easter. Stay safe and uh, hope to see you soon.